Hello and welcome to one and all from Manipal University Dubai to join us for a special edition of Manipal Dubai TV for the Global News Relay. In this fourth edition of the Global News Relay, centered on solution journalism, we bring to you some gripping stories from across the Emirates. This year we take you on a unique journey featuring the breast cancer awareness campaign called the Pink Caravan Ride 2017, the initiative undertaken by the Special Family Support Group, the food station set up for cats by the Animal Welfare Abu Dhabi and the Drones for Good Awards 2017. Breast cancer awareness takes place in a one of a kind campaign across the UAE known as the Pink Caravan Ride 2017. Hundreds of horse riders and volunteers take part in this national campaign to spread awareness. But in the 7th edition of the Pink Caravan Ride, the importance is not only to spread awareness but also the importance of its early detection and to host free screenings across the UAE. Let's see what the TV crew from Manipal University Dubai have to bring to us from the event at Sharjah Buhera Cornish. We're here at the 7th edition of the Pink Caravan, an annual breast cancer awareness campaign, which is an initiative by the Friends of Cancer Patients. Marking its official seven years, this year the theme follows as seven years for seven Emirates. It is going to be a 10-day ride with over 150 horse riders and over 100 medical students to encourage and spread awareness in the community about free medical checkups. Today's program kicked off with an exciting parade of horse riders in their traditional sports outfit representing the color pink. We had the chairperson of the higher organizing committee of the Pink Caravan, Reem bin Karam, as the distinguished guest to add starlight to the event. The event also provided a screening booth to women for free medical checkups. So this year we have developed the concept of a permanent booth or a permanent clinic where it is a fixed clinic for the whole 10 day uh, it's a, in a, in a in a fixed location with fixed timing and a woman if she cannot make it to the um, you know mobile clinic she can still avail the services in uh, in the fixed clinic This program was not only targeted towards women but also men who volunteered in multifarious activities to raise the awareness about the breast cancer as uh, however it uh, it affects women and uh, men as well a lot of men they 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 think that it will it will, it will not affect on them so because of that uh, i joined the pink caravan to raise that awareness to let them know that it can be at it can happen to them one of the horse riders present at the site was delighted to talk about his experience seeing the pink caravan grow over the 7 years well numerous additions even in the sense of the people's reaction to the pink caravan the first year we were riding in the streets okay it was something new people were excited but then they didn't really get what the pink caravan was all about but year after year after year we've seen the people get more educated about breast cancer more educated about the early detection and its importance you know they're more attracted to the pink caravan more attracted to the free mammograms that we give to the free instructions that we give and so on and so forth many families were present at the venue to support this initiative with camera person Karan Hunch and Chetna Vedinathan this is Sakina Habib reporting for Global News Relay Special Families Support Group emerged in the UAE as an initiative to bring together families with children with special needs to connect with other families in similar situations. The SFS which is led by Mrs Gulshan Kavarana aims not only to spread awareness but also to educate the society of the special needs of these families. The SFS thus aims to create a community where the families can live harmonious and meaningful lives. The School of Media and Communication of Manipal University Dubai got the opportunity to meet and become a part of one such community. Let's take a look. Let's go. Let's go.
SFS stands for Special Family Support Group. Gulshan Kavrana started the SFS group around two decades back to bring light to society about special children and people awareness. Let's hear more from her. You can't accept anyone till you respect them. You can't respect anyone till you love them. So just love, respect and accept. And there are three smiley faces. If you look at the logo, there's one face that's a bit tilted, the smile. And yeah, they're all smiling people. Not everyone even notices it, you know. And that's what she wanted to say, that it's so subtle. If you're not looking, you just see a smile, you know. Accepting her blessing in disguise took her a leap of faith, for Zara became her perception of real people. Zara was diagnosed with Dravet syndrome. She um, was going to be disabled, that's what the doctor kept telling us. And I was so blessed to have wonderful people that came in my life. One was Sandhya Pereira. She came as a volunteer to work with Zara. And I had this big attitude that, you know, only my child is uh, disabled and you don't know anything about it. And then when I spoke to her, she said, yeah, I understand. I said, no, you don't. So she said, no, I do. So I said, listen, I have a child with special needs. She said, and I have two. And she, when, she, when I saw her and the way she was coping with life, I said, that's where I want to be. And then, you know, I, I, I used to speak to her and I said, you know, Sandhya, I really want to start a support group for people with epilepsy. At that time it was in my mind, just so that I could understand what the other families were going through. This is before social media, this is before Facebook, where we could just get support. And then she introduced me to Aisha Saeed, who now is the director of Manzil. We started uh, SFS together. And you know, they, they, they're the most wonderful human beings. They, they don't judge you, first thing. They don't care what you look, they don't care that your hair is white or your thin, fat, they just don't care about that. They have no greed. They, 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 a lot of them don't have any filter, they just tell you what they see. And, and that's so beautiful, you know, to spend time with real people. They, they see the purity in you. Or they, if they want to engage with you, then they come towards you. And if you allow it and accept them with open arms, you know, they change your life forever. People with disabilities are here on earth for a reason. And if we just get to know them, and just to see how beautiful they are and forget the challenges that they face, you, you just see a human being. And that's what they see in you. They don't see, oh, she's like this and she has this temperament. They don't see all that, you know. So we should see life through their eyes. Because I'm part of a family and I wanted my whole family to enjoy with, you know, it was, it was wonderful that we could go out as a family and we could go to the picnic. Me and, you know, the fathers were really standing back. The month. Women, we can share what we are feeling much easily than men. And then the, once the men started talking about it and their struggles, their financial struggles as well. We all carry our own uh, burden, but once we share it, and we sit together and we all say, okay, you know, this is something I'm going through, it's wonderful. The group has an expansive global reach. Having its base in the UAE, the group has inspired people all around the world. You know, I've never thought about, oh my God, we need to make this big and we need to add 500 families. It's never been about that. People have just found us online. There was this one guy who was traveling through uh, Dubai. He said, can I just, you know, I'm writing a book. Can I quote you in the book? Can I start something like SFS in Malaysia? I said, of course, you know, and then we've been in contact. This lady, Fadia Harun, she is in Bahrain. She has a son who's born without arms. They came for our anniversary and they said, oh, this is wonderful what you all are doing. Can I start something like this in Bahrain? I said, yeah, please. This just recently completed five years. When they completed three years, I was invited to come and just see what they're doing. You know, it's just, it's growing. Accept love and respect are synonymous to the SFS group. Anyone and everyone can offer to help out. Bring out the giver in you 
and check out sfsgroup.net and their Facebook page to volunteer and be a part of their family. With camera person Shreyak Bopana, this is Vignesh Satyarajan for Global News Relay. A series of cruelty cases against cats in Abu Dhabi called for a volunteer-led education program known as the Animal Welfare Abu Dhabi. The program, which is led by Dr. Susan Eilot, has established multiple cat feeding stations across the Emirate. The media crew of Manipal University, Dubai, has more for us on the story. I've always been an animal lover. I've grown up with cats and animals all my life. When I came to Abu Dhabi, I was looking for work. Every time I went looking for work, I came back with a kitten. There seemed to be a big problem. The problem being there was obviously lack of trap, neuter, return, so lack of sterilization for the cats. Um, and also the health and welfare was not being observed either. So there was a, a big concern to me. So I presented a um, a total solution package, which is a case of feeding stations and a comprehensive sterilization system. The Lulu Island project was special because we, we rely totally on volunteers for that. So just through the goodness of their heart and the goodwill and want to make a change in Abu Dhabi and the UAE in general, they came on board with Animal Welfare Abu Dhabi. We've got a good trapping team. We have some fantastic surgeons. So we take our traps over. We bait them with tuna. And obviously, they come running in, ideally, into the traps. The traps close behind them. And then we cover the cages, because it does relax the cats at that point. So by the time we get them to the, the field station, the, the doctor will then inject them and sedate them very quickly. And they'll just go to sleep for a while until we do the surgery. And they come out fine and recover very well. I love the whole job. Uh, I think I'm very lucky to do what I do, uh, just to say that you enjoy what you're doing. There's a lot of mileage in just treating um, sick animals. Identifying the diseases themselves, making a diagnosis is intellectually rewarding, and then knowing how to fix things is rewarding again. One doesn't really work with the, with the other, without the other, so we set up feeding and sterilization programs. So the feeding stations we do, we set up at strategic areas all across Abu Dhabi. Now they're also maintained by a series of volunteers, because we are completely volunteer-based. And the love and attention they give to the cats is priceless. We fairly routinely rescue dogs. We've recently rescued some, a monkey, a couple of monkeys, um, that were being held in very unsavory conditions um, in terms of um, tantamount to animal abuse. So it, it's all animals. We've recently rescued a donkey from the side of the highway. Um, so anything that needs help, anything we feel that needs assistance and has a, needs a better quality of life, we will assist with. We'd like to be a responsible organisation that's licensed and actually appreciated by the government, working with the authorities to actually better an animal welfare in the UAE. We'd also like to um, implement um, a process of better st uh, sterilisation, so better TNR, better animal welfare on the street level. Uh, we would like to have mobile clinics to help people because we, not everyone has the money, and we certainly don't, we're not funded, but we need something, support from the government, and actually I do believe we can all help in our own way to volunteer and actually help animals out. We're a community-based programme where we all not just care and respect for animals, we care and respect for each other in the community, so building community links, um, building ties and improving the lives for everybody and obviously the animals. In an attempt to revolutionize technology and future robotics, the UAE initiated the Drones for Good Awards, which brings together teams from both national and international levels on a common global platform. We got the opportunity to be a part of this event and meet with some of the contestants. So let's take a look. It's hard to imagine drones carry out rescue missions, provide communication in disaster struck areas, and prevent oil spills. The UAE government takes one step closer to bring about positive technological solutions to serve a social cause here at the UAE Drones for Good Awards 2017. The third edition of the UAE Drones for Good Awards, taking place at the Dubai Internet City, has received submissions from over 1,300 companies from around the world. 
The event is not only aimed at attracting big companies and support startups, but also to support the initiative to do good for humanity. We came up with the idea of using a drone to identify but also put out uh, specific types of fires. So uh, the drone is manually operated. Uh, when a call is received by civil uh, defense, the, uh, the drone is then deployed with the various cameras that are on top. As you can see, we have a thermal camera that can identify the source of the, of the, drone, the fire, but also uh, identify if there are people around it, maybe within the smoke that can be helped and uh, then save them. So the communication, of course, by the drone operators. And then there's a payload which, uh, you know, uh, once it touches uh, the fire, it explodes, <laughs> removes the oxygen factor, but also the powder then comes down on the fire to put it out. So this was how uh, we put the ideas together. We went several iterations of prototyping, and then we found the right use case for it, and we applied for the competition. And so everything here was, it's not about inventing something new, it's about utilizing the various uh, aspects that are already out there into something that is unique. So my name is Patrick, and I'm the founder of AV. And AV is also the name of this drone. AV is, um, it's not a drone, and it's also not an airplane, but it's a combination of both of them. So the unique thing about the aircraft that we are building is that it can take off and land like a drone, so vertically, uh, as well as fly horizontally like an airplane. And that's about 10 times as efficient, so therefore we can stay up in the air for hours and hours. Um, and we have a range of about 400 kilometers. Question, actually the whole reason that our company exists is because we want to do good. Um, we, we started off with the fact, okay, how can we contribute to the world and how can we make sure that we actually help out? And we mainly focused on the refugee crisis. Uh, on the Mediterranean Sea every year about 4,000 people die. And um, well, it seemed that no one could do really anything about it. So we said, we have to have a drone or something to find those people, find the rest of refugee boats, and make sure we can actually help them, so give them rescue aid. And the normal drones were absolutely not good enough, so therefore we build our own. It's been a fun-filled and informative experience here at the UAE Drones for Good Awards 2017. With camera person Stefan L.C. Thomas, this is Chetna Vedinathan for Global News Relay. Solution journalism aims not only to focus on the social issues and problems of a place, but to also talk about the events that contribute to the society and bring about positive solutions. The UAE has continually worked towards giving to the nation and its people. The President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Nahyan, declared 2017 as the Year of Giving. In each of our stories, we define how certain groups or individuals are creating a difference, be it in the lives of the people, the society or the nation. So that's all for this year. Until next time, with camera person Kanchan Mekchiani, this is Chetna Vedinathan reporting for the Global News Relay.